Hi everybody, this is Craig Tanner for the Mindful Eye and the photo of the week on the Daily Critique. This week's photo of the week was created by Frank, who's an advanced photographer from Germany. Frank recently created this image on my Spirit of Whidbey Island workshop. One of the reasons I love working with workshop images on my video tutorials is I tend to just have a lot more information that surrounds the picture. It's a context that I feel like can help us to get more inspiration, more education out of these videos. This particular image was created by Frank during an assignment on the workshop where we were paying close attention to the design element of color. We are also paying close attention to the design principle of rhythm and I'll talk more about those things in just a minute. I wanted to talk at the very beginning of this video about something technical in your process that might really help you to do a better job of seeing. People at the beginning of my workshops talk about what they want to get out of the workshop. So many people would say I'd like to just see better in terms of the difference between reality and the photographs that I create. I want to give you uh, a tool here that is very, very simple to access for most of you, but um, something that is cultural and just your habit as a photographer may keep you from taking full advantage of it. One of the things about this picture is that for a lot of people they would look at it and they would make an assumption that these seats are inside of some kind of enclosure. You might imagine that it's open over here because you can see light pouring in from this direction, but it looks closed at the top. But in fact, it's just framing. The way this has been framed up here, this little negative space and finishing, the way this has been darkened is creating that illusion. The reality of this scene is that if you were standing there, it would just keep getting brighter and brighter because this is actually the very top of a very tall ferry boat that is open on top. If you go up here out of the frame, much higher at all, you'd be on top of the superstructure of the boat, just open to the wind and the sky. The reason that I am mentioning that in the context of this technique that I'm about to talk about is that one of the most difficult things for us to do is to look at reality and then try and make the transition from a three-dimensional reality and then all of the things that are affecting us in terms of actually experiencing reality and objectifying that into the two dimensions of a photograph. You have a digital camera. Most of you are shooting digitally. Most of you have a live view feature on your camera now where you can hit a button, lock the mirror up, and just be constantly previewing your subject matter or the scene on the back of your camera. One of the biggest changes for me in terms of my approach, the way I compose when it comes to contemplative subjects like this, still life, architecture, landscapes, things that aren't moving, is that I spend most of my time now, after I find an area or a subject that I want to shoot, looking for photographic possibilities in live view mode. Live view mode does two very powerful things for you. It's constantly getting rid of that third dimension that ha is having an effect on you and making it difficult when you look through the viewfinder. And the other thing that Live View is doing is it's framing the shot in a much more profound and objective way than it's even framed through the viewfinder. And it can really help you to see more photographic possibilities going from the reality of experiencing the scene as a human being and then moving towards trying to see as a photographer. On my workshops the last two years, I've been heavily encouraging photographers to use Live View. But the habit of a lot of photographers is to look through the viewfinder. Even if they try this a few times and it works pretty well, they may go back to looking through the viewfinder because of habit. So for a lot of people, there's a habit there that you're going to have to break. But there's something else, too. In the beginning of digital, cheaper digital cameras, you couldn't look through your lens. You had to look on the back of the camera. So there's this thing drilled into some photographers' heads that looking on the back of your camera to compose is the move of somebody that is an amateur with a cheap camera. And if there's one thing that I could get you to start doing, if you're not doing it, that would help to, you to see in a more profound way, or we could use a word like professional way or expert way, it would be to use Live View in the way that I just described. Let's talk about color for just a minute here. This was an assignment where we're paying attention to color. One of the things that I love about the colors here is that this is a shot that is very simple in terms of color. We'll talk about the sign here in just a minute, but if we were to jettison that, we really have a very limited amount of color. We're basically, for the most part, if we want to talk about hue of color, just dealing with a continuum of cyan from very high value or bright cyan to places that get very dark in terms of cyan. And then we have a suggestion of achromatic color ideas, these silvers and grays and pushing towards very dark gray and even black in some places. And then a few edges here where we start to express white. So this is 
a very, very powerful shot in the terms of simple color. And then the other thing that I want you to consider, in addition to looking for opportunities like this, where you can express a very narrow range of color in a simple way and how that might have a big effect, particularly if you can include something that's achromatic in that context. The other thing I really want you to consider is that the hue of the color, yes, that matters from a design standpoint in the way the frequencies of colors and hue relate to each other, but color has this other, in my opinion, more powerful aspect, which is the emotional impact of color. And one of the amazing things about this shot is that you have these rounded seats there that are empty, bathed in this amazing light. This is a shot that just invites you in your life to first slow down and then stop and then rest. And the color is totally, with the exception of the sign, congruent with that. Cyan's, grays, silvers moving into these dark areas. Uh, these are color ideas and color relationships that we equate with the sky and with marine environments, lakes and oceans. And those are places in our life that we tend to experience contemplation and rest and peace. And so a great question to ask yourself is, okay, color might be really interesting, but how are colors playing with the concepts of the images of your image? And this is such a powerful image in terms of simplicity of shape and architecture and simplicity of color, the suggestion of resting, and the same thing happened emotionally with color, and the same thing with the light. So many things are working well together here. And then you have this. You have something that breaks all that up in a very classical way. You have this tiny little area that's a very high value because there's uh, letters. Anytime we have letters, that's a strong archetype. We have red, the opposite of cyan. We have no and caution in a place where it just seems completely out of place. It says even no climbing. And for the person that thinks there's a roof up here, you might think this just looks like the most safe slide in the world. Well, no, they don't want you climbing because you can get up on the superstructure of an incredibly tall ferry here. It's another really beautiful thing about the way Frank has finished this. It really helps this to be a really powerful bit of tension in a photograph that is otherwise pushing in another direction altogether. There's all kinds of ways that we can see uh, the beautiful design principle of rhythm playing out in this image. Rhythm is repetition with variation, and it's just really powerful. It's really almost like anywhere you look in this image, you're looking at a variation of a motif that's happening somewhere else. If you look at the arc, and then the arc here, and then the arc here, there's a whole series of different sized triangles that are implied that are very, very powerful in the image. It's just like everything else in this image, even this area down here where the decking gets wet and then it's dry here, and this demarcation line between positive and negative space, even that arc plays with the back of the chairs, and it just keeps happening over and over and over again, the implication of rhythm and how when you move around in this image that helps to give you a very powerful sense of things being unified. Even in this negative space up here, yes, it helps to contain um, and it helps to bring you back around to have these ideas, but it's a lot more than that. It's that this whole thing up here becomes the back of another chair and so powerful in terms of expressing this idea of repetition with variation. Really stunningly beautiful to me um, architectural detail shot. And the other thing I love about this image is it um, is something that very few photographers would see because of the open nature of the top of what's happening here. Uh, most people wouldn't see to close this off and that's where I want to encourage you to come back to your live view. It is going to help you see a lot more like a photographer in my opinion I believe wants to see. Huge thank you to all the people who participate in my workshops. Without them, I can't do this. People ask me all the time, how do you just give all this away? Why don't you charge? If I charge, I'll get sponsors. It'll get weird. It's not going to be what I want. It doesn't give me the freedom to come and go if I need to take a break. People that take my workshops make this possible, period, and I can't thank them enough. I'd love to see you on a future workshop. Um, have a few spaces on a night photography workshop in Savannah, Georgia. Just a couple left on that one. One left in October on an advanced landscape workshop where I'm going to do something I've never done before. I'm going to have a large printer there. I'm going to be helping you learn more about inkjet printing. We're going to make a portfolio of prints for each participant on the workshop. And this is one of the most beautiful islands that I've ever been on in my life. It's not that well known. Trust me, it's just as beautiful and just as dramatic as any national park that you could go to, Jekyll Island. 
my spring workshops are getting full. I only have one space left on my Next Step Creativity Workshop. My opinion, that's the highest value service that I offer as a human being. Go look at the testimonials at that workshop. It's not hyperbole. People come together to be brave and to be courageous and to take creative risk and something magical happens every time that I am lucky enough to be a part of an next step workshop and only have a couple of spaces left on uh, my foundational landscape workshop that I teach every year on Jekyll Island in 2012 really excited to be announcing some new workshops very soon for 2012 night photography workshop in Terlingua, Texas that I'm going to teach in November 2012. I'm going to be teaching a workshop in the fall of 2012 in New Orleans, setting up a workshop in San Francisco in August of 2012 and have an advanced street portraiture workshop that involves lighting that I'm going to be teaching in Savannah, Georgia. Look for those workshops to be announced very soon on the Mindful Eye. Thank you so much for being here. Hope to see you again very soon.